let, let me you mean what when you say media you mean so, just films or what no so i've seen the use of media just small snippets use just songs probably short films to introduce people to an idea then take them back to a learning center so this whole concept of integrating media as a learning aid beyond the fact that just being an awareness advocacy tool so uh, i'm sorry mr sumitra sumitra was very uh, very clear on how she used media as a tool to enter society right a very useful way for her to then move forward once she uses that is also to then use elements of the media elements of her skill in using media and making sure. a making a film or the artist in, the artist she's worked with to teach someone can be a very big skill in then teaching people that's something i think that she also briefly touched upon when she spoke about street plays these are things i've seen working and i think it's something that needs to be pushed further but at the same time uh, pratik let me come to you at the same time uh, uh, coming to the way, not just films sure. but even to print now print or radio yeah. how biased do you think we are in what we produce so we'll talk a different perspective again regarding it's regarding print media which has been wrongly used i think so by the current politicians to address their campaigning that's that's what we call as paid news uh, for example uh, in us recently al gore mentioned in one of his speeches that uh, tv con tv takes 5 hours per day of an individual he said in one of its speeches and uh, and the democrats and the republicans there they have shown they have come up with some new thing called as 30 seconds ads which they show in the media and that is basically a that's, that's basically a campaign for for their parties which people see and now where does the funding for all these will come this will come from the businessmen and uh, and so whoever businessman gives the support to them uh, will get a support from the political party this is wrong uh, this should not be allowed i think so and i if i understand all this thing correctly a similar thing is happening in india that's called as paid news where in print uh, the politicians uh, politi uh, political party give their campaigning in the form of news like uh, he has done this he has done this this and that and uh, people read this as a news and uh, like that comes in on, on the editorial page and this uh, and there i think there has been something action has been taken by electoral commission regarding this like banning this kind of like putting up fines on the political parties who are trying to do this but i i think this kind of thing that is happening in a print media it's disintegrating the society so sachi just coming to you they say this is the time of the youth when what do you think as a youngster when i i'd say when you read such news some such paid news how does it affect you do you just do you get affected by it at all or you just shut the papers and say okay this is the world that i'm living in i don't care well i think i mean of course we're affected by it because all these things are a way to condition our minds and there's so much inf information that's flowing every day it's hard to like it's hard to actually be selective about what you're getting um i i don't know most of the young people i at least interact with i know they they boycott you know things like rakhi sawant's you know the famous show or or even news i know someone who's actually stopped reading newspaper because of the kind of news that that goes on so it's time we change this and i think young people today are stepping it up you know we see a lot of people starting new ngos or doing things in 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 media or journalism or whatever the point is that to hit them at the right time which you mm -hmm. sort of are doing with your um uh you know when you're teaching but uh, is to hit them at the right time and put in those values and i think then we are going to there's some hope and what do you feel about the same event so i i i'm a capitalist at heart so i would have a small <laughs> disagreement i have seen so uh, jokes about i've seen capitalism work very relevantly in social entrepreneurship right yeah. it's something that you also observed yeah. i think the the genesis of social entrepreneurship for me comes essentially from being from a capitalist organization trying to be most most efficient with using usage of resources the whole point of us disagreeing with media i think i'm a little uncomfortable with was at the end media is a very capitalist organization they would give you what you want mm. there are there are ways to limit it mm. uh, probably you can limit it but it's a question of choice 
So you could always go beyond the news and it's that one article that they publish out of the 200 and I don't know, out of the 2,000 articles that are outrageous, there'll be one thing that will be bang on, that's worth it. I think it's worth the trade-off because the one thing that comes out might make a lot of difference. So the the A Raja scam, for example, was brought out essentially in the news. Hmm. They've blown a lot of other things also out of proportion. But one of these things then kept keeps getting followed up at some different level. Hmm. So there is a trade-off. I'm, I'm okay with the trade-off, to be fair, because I've seen social entrepreneurship succeed, and I see it work well. You've seen it work, yeah. right? I've seen lots of yeah. small entrepreneurs taking us taking auto, auto drivers making a business out of running an auto successfully. So th yeah. that whole angle gets lost if you don't let people commercialize what they're trying to achieve. So just keep doing what you're doing. And yeah, I, I think, but the, the, the problem here is that the trade-off. At which point are you un uncomfortable with the trade-off? You can limit it. So for example, at 2611, we had to limit news articles telling the terrorists exactly where our uh, security guards were. So you need some, you would need controls, but I'm, I'm uncomfortable with the, uh, you know, the blanket ban on the whole thing. Because then you're killing a completely independent form of reporting. Yes, there will be biases, but you know, everything is biased. You need to make your choices. Just to where you live. Nice point. So let's quickly leave it to the audience now. We've spoken a lot. So any kind of questions or discussion that you'd like to uh, give to anybody? This gentleman right here. Uh, I'm Vijay Jodha. I'm a filmmaker. Uh, not a question, but more of a comment. A uh, couple of things, uh, because I have done stuff for Doodarshan, for example, so I can see a uh, reason why the kind of program, for example, what Pratik was talking about, why don't we have some of the shows that we used to see earlier, very serious, socially oriented programs, investigative documentaries, stuff like that. The uh, reason that has happened partly is that with the coming of uh, cable, Doodarshan has kind of uh, lost its way. It's a little confused about what its role is. It's caught between two stools, whether to be out and out, commercial, entertainment oriented, and largely mindless uh, entertainment that we see on cable, and the social goal. So that is one thing which has happened. Second thing, uh, you know, you're talking about, for example, what Arvind was saying that you know, finally, market forces can make everything work in a certain efficient manner. What's happening is this: that you know, as we know, TV is driven by ratings. Rating agencies, there are only two of them in India. And what they have done is they have deliberately excluded out whole of Northeast. They have excluded out Jammu Kashmir. And I think they've excluded out Bihar also. So they are focusing on the supposedly uh, well-off part of India, and you know, economically uh, well-off part of India. So the ratings that they are giving are necessarily false ratings. In no other market anywhere in the world would they allow these guys to do what they are doing in India. So I think it's, there's a serious policy problem or whatever the government uh, ought to do. And of course, the media is involved as well. So you know, any, it is still, uh, despite all of this, uh, what's happening, so many channels, it's still DD, Doodarshan still manages to have a larger share of viewership compared to all the channels put together. So ideally, it is still the, you can say, like the number one channel in a lot of senses. It's just that the media, including print media and the advertisers and some of these people, it's like a little scam that they're running, which makes all of us uh, believe, and so does the public outside, that yes, Rakesh Saman's new show is doing very well, everyone's watching it. Fact is that people are not. And so a lot of trash and a lot of trash which is not even being watched by people, we get the impression that people are interested in trashy stuff, they are not. You know, so that is one thing, which is why the things are the way they are. Because most people, yes, they are also interested in entertainment, but they are also interested in these other socially relevant issues, but still they don't get shown for that reason. Uh, second thing, uh, <coughs> what Sumitra mentioned that, you know, about doing, um, uh, you know, using older mediums like, say, street plays, etc., to take your message out. Uh, I have done projects uh, in which what we have done is we have actually filmed street plays because that can get a bit expensive too, trying to take cultural troupe all over the place. And what they've done is we have made very cheap VCDs, DVDs, uh, VCDs actually, in which you can sort of, anyone can pirate, you throw them on uh, YouTube and all of that, plus you give copies out, people can copy them. So in this case, I've done work with some doctors in Chhattisgarh where they'd used all these very humorous skits using local Chhattisgarhi artists. Uh, we had made films out of them. Those films, they have just copied it all over the place. And when doctors are going, you know, in places where there's no electricity, they just put them on their laptop and whole village can watch them. So, you know, you can find a way to combine a lot of the older and newer mediums, you know. Thank you.